Ergonomics has been very good for me. Um, they allowed me to keep my job, um, stay with the same profession I've, that I went to school for. And without them, I would have had to change my whole profession. In my opinion, this is a, a lot of better, a lot of better. Just through sheer repetition, we've developed methods that have kept us from becoming injured. You want to come to work and do the job now because it's, because it's a lot easier and you don't have to worry about getting hurt. Ergonomics is the scientific study of how the human body performs tasks in the workplace and fitting the job to the worker. Much like motion studies help athletes perform better and prevent injuries, ergonomics is a tool that can be used to improve jobs as well as make them healthier. You should be aware of some of the risks you may face on the job. It has been scientifically proven that ergonomics can actually reduce the risk of some types of injuries. These injuries are called work-related musculoskeletal disorders, or WMSDs. The specific injuries are things like tendonitis, bursitis, low back disorders, and carpal tunnel syndrome. WMSDs can be serious injuries, but if they are caught and addressed early on when symptoms appear, they often never develop into anything severe. First, we want to focus on how to prevent these injuries using the principles of ergonomics. Later, we'll talk about what to do if you start having symptoms of a WMSD. There are many things that everyone does on the job and at home that could contribute to a WMSD if they are done for long enough periods of time. Risk factors include working in awkward postures, using high hand force, performing repetitive motions, using your hand or knee to make repeated impacts, heavy, frequent, or awkward lifting, and exposure to moderate to high levels of vibration. Just because your job has risk factors doesn't mean that you're going to have a WMSD, though. In fact, a little bit of exposure to some risk factors can actually be good for you. Occasionally moving into awkward postures like reaching or bending will help to stretch and exercise your muscles. Whether or not a risk factor is a hazard for WMSD depends on the duration, the frequency, and the intensity of whatever it is you're doing. How long, how often, and how much. The longer you're exposed to risk factors, and here we're talking about hours per day, not just minutes, the more likely an injury will occur. You are also more likely to be injured if you have more than one risk factor at the same time. Now let's take a closer look at each risk factor mentioned earlier awkward postures. To understand what an awkward posture is, it helps to understand the opposite, good posture. A good posture is one that places the least amount of stress on your joints and muscles. This is referred to as neutral posture. It takes the strain out of your muscles and joints, allowing them to work more efficiently. While neutral posture places the least stress on your body, it wouldn't be good for you to stay in that position all day. Your body was designed to move around and is much happier when it's active. <laughs> Some parts of your job may require you to move into or maintain postures that aren't neutral. They include things like working with your hands over your head or your elbows above your shoulders. Repetitive lifting of this sort can lead to a shoulder or elbow WMSD. Holding your arms up overhead without bringing them down can cause problems. Working with your neck bent forward too far can place strain on your neck muscles, especially if you hold this position for a long period of time. Your head can weigh as much as a bowling ball, and that's a lot of weight for your neck muscles to hold up. Over time, the muscles in your neck and shoulders can tighten up, resulting in chronic muscle soreness. Similarly, working while bent over places a lot of strain on the muscles of your back. The weight of your upper body is a lot for those muscles to hold up, especially since those muscles are intended to hold you in an upright position. Bending over like this also increases the pressure on the discs of your spine. Squatting is a good alternative to bending at the waist, but only for short periods of time. If you squat for too long, it builds up pressure behind the kneecap and it can cause damage to the knee. Kneeling is another way to get down low, but it also causes pressure to build up behind the kneecap. 
working with your wrist bent in any of these directions also can be a problem. However, bent wrists are only really a risk for injury when combined with high hand forces or repetitive motions, but more about that later. Some jobs will always require awkward postures, but many can be done better with a few simple fixes. Some things that might work include changing the height of a workstation or display, tilting or rotating work to a better position, standing on a platform to bring you up closer to the work, or putting your work on a platform to bring it closer to you, bringing items within easy reach. Remember to stretch once in a while if you do have to work in an awkward posture for any length of time. My name is Manuel Guerrero. I'm been working uh, on a packing fruit here in Yakima. We used to pick up all the boxes from the line and stack them on, by hand on, on, on each pallet. They lift it up all, all the way up to six or seven high, you know? You gotta lift all your boxes all the way up to, you can even reach the top of the, of the seven high. Sometimes you gotta throw the box up. And I mean, it was hard for some, there's some guys that are short, short guys and they cannot do that. We've been having a lot of accidents picking up those boxes. They were heavy. People hurt the back. They stack the boxes now, but they don't have to leave the boxes. They just pick the boxes, pick up the boxes from the line and put them on the pallet. But four high. That's like has a clamp. So you gotta you gotta look under and see, you know, if you don't drop the boxes. Now it's a lot easier and faster. In my opinion, this is a, a lot of better, a lot of better. The amount of force required to grip something depends on a number of factors, but the most important thing is how you grip it. Gripping something with the whole hand, called a power grip, is five times more powerful than gripping something with the fingertips, known as a pinch grip. So, picking up something that weighs two pounds with a pinch grip is just as stressful as picking up 10 pounds with a power grip. When you bend your wrists, you actually lose a significant amount of grip strength. This increases the risk of injury, especially to the wrist and elbow. Other things can increase the amount of force needed to hold an object, such as if it's slippery, or if you wear loose-fitting gloves, or your hands are exposed to the cold any of which make it difficult to feel what you are gripping. One of the best ways to reduce grip forces is to use power grips instead of pinch grips whenever possible. For example, picking up objects from the bottom using your whole hand. Attach handles to things or use lift tools. Another great idea is to build up the handles on small tools to reduce the grip force. There are several things you can do to reduce the force you need when handling objects. Pick up smaller loads. Use power tools instead of hand tools. Keep tools maintained to reduce the force required to operate them. Use lighter tools or tool balancers. Use two hands to cut the force per hand in half. And remember, keep your wrists straight. Grip forces are also a problem if you hold on to an object for a long period of time. You can avoid this by using clamps to hold on to your work, placing items on carts rather than carrying them, and putting down a tool when you are not actually using it. 